Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. My email is tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch that is emblematic of vintage Vacheron. This is pre-Richemont Vacheron. This is pre-modern Vacheron as the hallmarks are pre-1995. And I would say 1980s is a solid bet for the period in which it was constructed. That said, it has an ageless movement that's almost one and the same as the watch. So let's go over all the features of this Vacheron Constantin skeleton timepiece. It is small, 30 millimeters in diameter. The timepiece is only 4.4 millimeters thick and 31.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with an 18 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now on my wrist, it wears like a very traditional and conservative men's dress watch. If you are going to wear a watch with a tuxedo, some people frown on that. This is the type of watch. My wrist is 16 centimeters, and you can see how far inboard those lugs are, even from over the top. By modern standards, this would be considered a lady's watch, but that was not the intention in the era in which it was made. Getting a little bit closer, you can see that the strap that's fitted is a Vacheron Constantin, factory strap. We have a Brogioli Vacheron pin buckle, which I strongly suspect is of a later fabrication than the rest of the watch. We'll get a little bit closer and show that to good effect. The watch is extremely simple. You can see there's a case knife slot in the flank. You can see the lugs are welded on, a very traditional fabrication method. The bezel was originally polished and the case satinated, or the case band satinated to create some contrast. Maltese cross on the crown along with a little kerf underneath. And you can see how thin it is as the stem assembly has the case shrink wrapped around it. Now the dial features transferred indices outboard of a skeletonized movement at center, and you can see that the hour track has been brushed. The movement is the Vacheron 1003 SQ, a caliber originally designed by Jagère Lecoult for Vacheron and AP during the 1950s. It was first used on an Audemars Piguet's caliber 2003 in 1953. Vacheron saved it for its 200th anniversary in 1955. That marked the debut of this caliber 1003 in Vacheron service. Taking a quick look, you can see that the barrel is only connected on one side. So it's a hanging barrel, which helped this movement to achieve its then world record thickness for a wristwatch caliber of 1.64 millimeters thick, and it remains 1.64 millimeters thick today. Manual wind, you can see that the barrel is small, having been fully skeletonized and engraved like the rest of the movement. You wind it at the same time every day. It has a 31-hour power reserve. It beats away to very stately 18,000 vibrations per hour, and you can actually see the operation of the train and the escapement from the dial side. All this pivots on 17 joules, and it is adjusted admirably in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. A movement this small, sometimes brands take a just work please approach to it. They wanted it to work beautifully and keep good time. Now taking a look, you can see that we have a full skeletonization of every bridge and every plate with the inclusion of the barrel. You could see the motion works and the keyless works next to each other. The keyless works is the combination of clutch and springs that allows you to alter alternate between winding and setting. Inboard of the keyless works, we have the motion works. So you can see there are intermediate wheels leading to the minute wheel. The minute wheel pinion drives the hour wheel. And then underneath the hour wheel, the cannon pinion drives the minute wheel. So that's how the operation of the watch works. Now I have it in setting mode. You can see as I push the crown back in, the clutch moves back, puts everything back into winding mode as the Breguet teeth engage. Turn it all over. This is beautifully finished on the reverse side as it is on the dial side. You can see that this watch is vintage. It not refinished. We're not going to touch it. So you're getting all the original metal, but you're also getting all of its lifetime scratches and scuffs. This is going to be sold 
intact. We're not going to polish this down. There's, there's little enough of it as it is. It doesn't need to become thinner. The architecture of the bridges is quite traditional as we have our crown wheel, ratchet wheel atop the barrel, that's in steel. Then we have the center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, escapement, and then the balance. And you can see that the stud holder as well as the regulator are both black polished as are all of the screws on this movement. The beveling is impressive. The skeletonization must have been painstaking. And when a watch like this goes back for service, the parts are cleaned manually, and the service is generally done by advanced watchmakers, the kind of people who generally work on tourbillon and minute repeaters. Servicing a movement like this is an advanced evolution requiring experience. I love the enormous black polished click spring that prevents the barrel from running backwards. This watch is simply full of little details like that. This is Vacheron doing what it does best. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.